So I come today to talk about some applications on the filter reflection of light. So the first application that we have is uh, the optical fiber. So optical fibers are thin cylindrical thread shaped uh, fibers through which light is directed to move in numb straight lines. So the idea of the optical fibers to force the light not to move in a straight line, to move in the path of the optical fiber. Because we know that light moves in straight lines, and in some cases, we want to lead light to some place where if it moves in straight lines, it will not reach this place. So optical fibers are widely used in medicine, like in endoscopes, which is used in diagnosis, and it's also used with lasers, because lasers are capable of carrying millions of electrical charges through the electro fibers, which are characterized by the characteristics of the optical fibers. And we'll talk about the lasers later. So what happens is, when the incident light falls with an angle higher than the critical angle, for example like this, it refracts inside the optical fiber, then this refraction is followed by multiple reflections inside the optical fiber. And this moves through the optical fiber so it reaches the other end and then light emerges from the other opening. So this is how light moves through the optical fibers. So even of the if the optical fiber is bent, the light will move through the curve of the optical fiber and not in a straight line. The second application is the prism, the reflecting prism. The uh, refractive index of glass is 1.5. So the critical angle between glass and air is about 42 degrees. So the prism, which we use in here, is the reflecting prism. It's a right angle prism and this isosceles because each of the other two angles are 45 degrees. Such a prism can reflect light by 90 degrees or 180 degrees. For example, if light goes from this side, we will see that light reflects this way. This is the normal, and so light falls by this angle. So uh, this is the right angle, this would be also 45 degrees. So the angle of reflection will also equal 45 degrees. So the light ray will go in this path. This angle accordingly will be 90 degrees. So here, light is reflected by 90 degrees. In the other prism, if light um, goes through the hypotenuse of the triangle, so it falls this angle, then it's reflected, then it falls on this angle. This is how the light is uh, reflected by 180 degrees through using the right angle prism. So here, the right angle is in this place, and here the right angle is on this place. These prisms have an advantage over the metallic surfaces that reflect light, because the efficiency of these prisms is about 100%, while the metals that reflect the light absorb some amount of light through the process of reflection, so there is a loss of light. Also, the metals that reflect light have a metallic luster, and so they are subjected to corrosion, and this decreases the capability of these metals to reflect the light. And finally, um, as there is also some little amount of loss of light inside the prisms, they may be lined from the inside by a substance called 
cryolite, which is formed from aluminum fluoride and magnesium fluoride, because they have a refractive index less than glass, so this even prevents any loss of um, reflection of light, and so the efficiency of the prism becomes nearly 100%. The reflecting prisms can be used in binoculars or in periscopes in submarines so that people can see outside the submarine or see what's found on the surface of the sea. So the last thing that we are going to talk about is mirage. So if somebody is in the desert and he sees um, in the sand the shiny spot where the reflection of the objects around it is found, so we think that this is a water pond, well, it's nothing. So this is what happens. So the sun's heat heats up the sand, because the sand absorbs heat, and so it becomes very warm, so it heats up the air layer adjacent to the sand. This leads to decreasing the density of the air in the layer adjacent to the sand. So the density of this layer decreases and it becomes less than the density of the air in the upper layer. Then, when the light falls on the palm tree and then it's reflected so that you can be able to see the palm tree, what happens is now the light ray shall move from up to down due to the difference in height. So when it goes from the palm tree downwards, the angle of incidence on the air becomes more than the um, critical angle. And at that point, because the density of this air is less than the density of the air above, the light ray deviates and when it reaches the point where the critical angle is less than the angle of incidence, it takes another path and it makes a curve that goes upwards like that. So when you receive the light, you think that it's going to you from downwards. Well, it's actually coming from upwards, but the light ray deviated due to the difference in density between the air adjacent to the sand and the air in the upper layer. So this is how Mirage takes place. This is it for today. Until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you.